everything's going to be felled that you see from Shelton Water Tower right the way across to that veteran oak at the top. As you come up here, you'll have a clear view of a roundabout rather than trees. Yeah. It's unavoidable if they're going to have a roundabout here. But you know, you're talking a pretty damned impressive oak. This is the veteran tree of the future. This is the link between the ancient trees and the new trees. So this tree is a healthy tree. It's starting to slow down. It's going to start de developing the pockets that create the microclimates and which produce very specialised biology. And that transfers from the really old trees to the next stage trees. It doesn't work in young trees, you don't get that habitat. And if you take these medium sized trees that aren't ancient, but they're notable, you cut the link between the genuinely ancient trees and the new trees coming up. And that's a tragedy because that's irreplaceable. They're, they're irreplaceable cycles of ecology. And when the government says in the MPPF, these trees shouldn't be removed, when the word irreplaceable is used, you can't then start talking about compensation because you can't compensate for the irreplaceable. But, ah, oh, makes me cry. Which is the older tree? This one down here. The Darwin tree. The, the Darwin So. If you look at the variety of species in this hedgerow, that's indicative of its age. Again, hedgerows are irreplaceable because they haven't been affected by the ploughing and the agriculture of the land. So the soil underneath them, the dead wood in them, contains a vast array of connections of invertebrates and fungi, which is an island and a footpath between various different habitats, between the woodland to the west here and the river repairing habitat. This is a wildlife highway. And when it's gone, the wildlife's lost. It's faced with trying to get across a, a major road. So it breaks really important habitat connections. Compensating with new planting hedgerows, it's not compensation. It's a greenwash because you cannot replace undisturbed soils and the invertebrates in the life that they contain. You can not even mimic them. My name is Jamie. I'm here at um, Shelton Ruff. Uh, I walk my dog here quite often. It's a lovely part of Shrewsbury. And um, I'm standing in front of one of the trees that's going to be felled to make way for the Northwest Road, which is going to be here. This tree is one of almost a thousand trees that's going to be lost. This one's a, a veteran ancient oak. It's been standing here for probably about 550 years, so the tree experts tell me, which is quite hard to con to actually think of but you know you're talking about this tree was here back in the war of the roses back in the days when men used to fight each other wearing armor and um, with swords it was also probably a tree that was standing here when charles darwin used to walk through these fields so if we lose these trees we're going to lose a really vital link to our past something that's irreplaceable you know no amount of saplings that can be planted are going to replace a tree that stood here for 500 years and is still in healthy condition, probably has another couple of hundred years left in it. And what we're doing by taking trees like this down is we're really destroying the ecosystem that's all around us here. I mean, we're in 
an absolutely beautiful part of Shrewsbury's Green Wedge. This is the point of this area is to offer nature a place to thrive and we're just going to come in here and concrete all over it. And there really isn't any need for these trees to be going. It breaks my heart really to see this happening. Okay, uh, well I've, I've been walking uh, dogs here, my dogs here for probably about 15 years, maybe longer. And um, my late father also used to walk along here. And I've noticed this tree, I've, I've often walked up to it just to look at it and admire it um, and walk on. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's it, in this particular area, it is perhaps the most striking tree simply because of its, its scale, its girth, its mass. It is an extraordinary tree. You only have to look at it to see that. And for this tree to be felled, to make way for the road, I think would be an incredibly sad thing to have to do. And I, I would have thought there must be some way of trying to save it. And um, I really hope that they can, um, because it would be a desperately sad loss to, for everyone who loves trees. So what you've got here is two two veteran oak trees. The one directly in front of us is 280 years old and the one slightly to the left is 310 years old. And they're identified for removal despite not being on the, the main route of the bypass, but merely to facilitate a, a, an access road for the development of the bypass. I mean, these trees are our heritage, 300 years. Think what's happened in that time, the history of this land. This tree's seen it all. It's part of our cultural heritage being lost for an access road that could be put somewhere else. It's tragic. Here you've got five of the oaks in the, in the cluster of the Shelton Oaks. Um, the, the, the relief road passes through all five of these trees, despite the amount of space either side and the complete capacity to avoid building over these trees. The easternmost of these trees is over 300 years old, 347, which would place it basically during the rule of King Charles, this tree was a sapling, in 1674. Now that's heritage in anyone's language. Charles stepped up from when Cromwell left off, a pivotal point in English history, and this tree marks that pivotal point of our history, and is being removed when it could have easily been missed and avoided to facilitate the bypass. Right, so this is the section of the link road at Shelton between the river and Oxen. As you can see, the, the areas highlighted in yellow are trees or groups of trees that have been identified for removal. So starting at the river, you've got group 2119 and 211, which are identified as a group but are effectively woodlands. Unfortunately, this disguises the sort of significance of them between these two groups and the woodland alongside the Hollyhead Road. I've estimated 350 to 400 trees being lost. If you add the trees alongside the Shelton Waterworks, which is another 125 trees, that's 500 trees lost that aren't recorded as individual trees. Now this is an important area due to the cluster of veteran trees. So the Darwin Oak, which is 550 years old, is this beautiful tree and the linking hedgerow that runs from the woodland side river to the trees and woodlands and hedgerows alongside the Hellerherd Road is to be lost. A cluster of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight veteran trees in this area alone are to be lost. Now, if you move along above the Shelton Waterworks, you get over into the Oxen area, 
where there's another very important cluster of approximately 15 veteran or notable trees of which nine have been identified for removal. Tree 65, over 350 years old, was around when Charles II came to the throne and has seen everything that the planet can throw at it, that mankind can throw at it, including the mini ice age and changes in agricultural practices. It's this tree along with the Darwin Oak are our heritage. They're as important as our buildings. The government's own policy statement on ancient woodland and veteran trees identifies features like this as being equally important to our castles and cathedrals. They are an irreplaceable resource, more so, I feel, than built structures because you cannot replace something that has survived everything for 500 years growing year on year. And if you look at the run of the map of the route, many of these trees, even if the bypass went ahead, could be missed through small design changes, very subtle differences that might take the engineers a little bit more work and a small amount more expense. But if these were historic structures, we wouldn't think twice about the expense.